Welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Evangelist Jordan Collada with JBB Ministries and the Jordan B Band. We are so blessed that you've chosen to join us tonight. We have an outstanding show. We have a joy-filled show, one of hope, one that really brings the whole love and mercy in God of God to the forefront. And you know, it seems anymore, any station you turn, you know, there's some really saddening and worrisome. Uh, news. But tonight we have great news. The great news is our Lord Jesus Christ is here, He's present, and He will give us the comfort and the blessings that we need. And so tonight, stay with us. We have some great music. We have some great guests. We're going to lift you up. And with that, we're going to start right off now with an amazing band, uh, Heather Patero and Friends singing Alpha and Omega. Take it away, y'all. Amen, amen, and amen, Heather and the, and the band. That was absolutely uplifting. Thank you so much. So what, we now get a chance to speak with a, a guest who I think just has an incredible, incredible story. I, I think her, uh, 
the title of her book says it all, and the title is, I Don't Look Like What I've Been Through. Deborah Thomas, thank you for being here tonight. I love this because I think it really amplifies and, and speaks to the things that, that you have pushed through, but yet through that pushing, you saw God and his hand and his blessings all along the way, even when things were at their most dire. Is that fair? That's fair. Well, I can't wait to have you share with the audience tonight just, you know, your walk and, and just the importance of faith and, and, and staying true to knowing God has us. With that, if you want to give us some uh, part of the story, or all of it, uh, however you want to lay it out, it's all yours. Sure. Amen. What I want you to realize is that when I decided to write this book, um, I went through a journey with breast cancer. And I had a good friend of mine that came over to the house to pray. Mm. And I had other guests there. And one of the things that she did, she prayed for everybody and she prophesied to everybody. Amen. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting on her to say something <laughs> to me. And she says, this didn't catch God by surprise. So when I started to write this book, I started thinking about my story, about how God is a healer. Mm. And when I found out that I had breast cancer, God didn't give me a spirit of fear. I didn't feel like it was a death sentence, but I knew that my faith was going to have to carry me through. And that's what I relied on through the whole process. Amen. So what happened was I went to have wellness checks that I do frequently every year. And from one year to the next year, I discovered that I had, my breasts had changed. Mm. And so I went through all of the necessary tests that my doctor had prescribed for me to do, and the test came back negative. Really? Yes. And so I went on a trip with my, for my job, and I came back. And I have a daughter that just kind of just aggravated me. So <laughs> you need to find out what the test results are. By the grace of God, she right. was aggravating you, right? Right. right. <laughs> so I, I called the doctor, and he said, you know, made an appointment, and he came in. He said, all your tests are negative. However, we know that there's a mass there. Let's just have it removed. So in the process, I had a, what they call a lumpectomy. They removed the mass. I was very ignorant to the process. So when I went back to, for my checkup after I had the lumpectomy, I was actually in the room undressing. And I had an older sister that came in the room. She barged in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? She said, I need to know. And so after we exchanged a few words, uh, the doctor looked at me. I said, it's OK. She can stay. So she stayed, and he proceeded to say, well, I want you to know that you had breast cancer. And she immediately said, the devil is a liar. You know, she kind of just interjected. Wow. So I just sat there pretty calm. And he said, did you just hear what I said? I said, yes, I heard you. You said I had breast cancer. So what's the game plan? Right? He said, well, I'm going to send you to a radiation oncologist, I'm send you to an oncologist, and they'll, let, they'll know what the game plan is. In the, meeting, in the meantime, this is what I'm suggesting you to do. So immediately, um, I just prayed. Mm. And so, you know, during the time, my sister was asking a lot of detailed questions. You know, and it didn't dawn on me until like two or three days later. Yeah. As I started reflecting, I said, how does she know? to ask those detailed questions. Right, right. They're so, very specific. Very specific. Mm. So I called her. She said, oh, I just went through this last year. Mm. And I just gave her the strain. So you didn't think it was necessary for me to know. Wow. She said, well, I just need to handle it by myself. Mm. So I said, OK. I went to the radiation oncologist. And she you know, sat with me about an hour. And she told me all the things that I would have to go through, 12 weeks of radiation and chemotherapy. And if she couldn't find, if she couldn't dissolve the matter, then, then she would have to do a double mastectomy. Mm. And so I went back home and I prayed again. And I said, no, I'm just going to elect to have the double mastectomy. Mm. And in the process of this, I found that I had an older sister that had gone through this also. Wow. And so I joined a group called Sisters Network of Orlando. It's a, it's a support group for African Americans who have mm -hmm. gone through breast cancer. And in that process, I found out that a lot of these women didn't talk. Everything was just silent. 
And it's this phrase that has been permeated through our culture is that whatever goes on this house stays in this house. So the women started suffering in silence. Mm. And I said, God, you allow me to go through this to help. This is not about me. It's all about you. So give me the instructions so I can help somebody else to give them hope. Mm. And so this is how this book was derived. I wrote this book from John. I took the scriptures from John 5, 1 through 9, about the man who had been at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. And so I, I was looking, and I was just kind of just going through this passage, and I'm saying, wow, he's been going to the pool for 38 years looking for a different result but doing the same thing. So I use that scripture to talk about how women become very complacent. Mm. We're going to... We're going to go get it done, you know, we put, and so as women, I realized that we put everybody else's problems in front of ourselves. We don't take care of ourselves. Uh -huh. We're busy taking care of everybody else. Uh -huh. And so Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made well? He said, but I'm waiting on a man to put me in. And I used that as excuses. And I talked about different excuses that women, as you know, we come up with to not get ourselves checked. Mm. And then he said, take up your man and walk. Amen. That's action. We have to take action. We got to believe who God said he is. He said he's a healer. You have to stand on it that he's a healer. Amen. You got to have faith. He said it is impossible to please him without it. Mm. So I stood on the word of God and I went through the process. And it wasn't an easy process because after I had the bilateral mastectomy, I ended up with a, a very severe infection. And with sepsis, it was in my bloodstream. Wow. 95% of the people don't leave the hospital alive with it. Mm. So here's God's grace on my life again. It's trusting in him that he's a healer. And he brought me through that process. But it, it, it slowed the process down. And it was something that I really needed because I was a workaholic. Ah. So it was time for me to just sit back and relax and to just hear and rest and see where God would take me. Yeah. So in that process, that book was birthed out of that. And then I asked other women to tell their testimonies. Now, not every woman that I went to were willing to tell their testimony sure. because women identify themselves by their physical attributes. Either I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too fat, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So having your breasts removed signifies that my body is being marred. Wow. So my thing is to give people hope. Amen. You're not who you, your body doesn't define who you are. Amen. You're defined in Christ. Amen. And so that was the reason why I actually wrote this book, to give people, to give women hope, to let them know that there is a God that's out there that is a healer, but you have to trust him. Amen. And these, in times like this today, we have to still trust him, regardless of what is going along, or along in our lives or in, in the world itself, we still have to put our trust in God. Amen. Well so, said. You know, I, I'm sure many of our uh, audience um, participants today are, are hearing this saying, boy, how can you possibly stay that positive when you know the world seems like it's ending when you get told you have cancer you, right away you think my goodness i'm done and what I, I love about the message you bring today is that it's it don't let the typical things that come the baggage that shows up at your door when you have to deal with difficulty don't let that be where you focus your time it just it just bogs you down it makes it so the point that you can't even see the light of day instead Pray that away, bind that away, get that out of your life. Don't let, don't let Satan be dragging you down. Mm -hmm. And then focus on, first of all, establishing your connection with the Lord Jesus Christ through prayer, first and foremost, because as, as we heard from you, you were presented with some options, or at least the, the, the most leading option, mm -hmm. and, and the Lord told you, hey, that's not going to be how you, you're, you're not going to go down that path. And as it turned out, even though you've had some difficulties here and there with this, you had, when you w walked away from that operation, there was no concern about cancer, there was no chemo, there was no radiation. That part of your life was done. Now it's just a matter of recovery. And I think that's a great message for us in this day and this time, especially what's going on right now with this whole uh, pandemic. 
You have to believe that God is bigger than any situation. Amen. Amen. And so when you come to that point, and then I had a support system, had family. Mm. I caught it in the possible earliest stage that you can possibly catch breast cancer. And that's because of wellness checks. Ah. You see? Yes. So I am encouraging women to go get yourself checked. Get those wellness checks. A lot of times they don't want to do it because of fear. Mm. And fear is based on your expectation of what the outcome is going to bring. You don't even know what the next second is going to bring. So you have to trust God throughout everything. There's no if, buts. He said that you have to believe that who I am. He said, I am that I am. And I just stood on that. Even in the darkest times, Amen. you know, this didn't catch God by surprise. <laughs> so I stood on that word that this didn't catch God by surprise. And he's sovereign. Amen. You know, the... Uh this idea that, that we have to be vigilante in our beliefs. Because really, when we talk about trusting in God, right, it's no matter how shaken you can get, and we all do, right? It's easy to say, don't be shaken. But when right. you're dealing with the news, whatever that news may be, it, it's difficult. And, and I think the key is to come back to this point right here that you're bringing, that the Lord's not going to forsake us. He's not going to give us something we can't handle. And most importantly, you need to place your trust and be as, as, as confident as you can be that the Lord will handle what you pray for. Absolutely. Amen. I mean, that's the key, right? You, Absolutely. You prayed for that, that victory in that, in that healing, and the Lord delivered it to you, and then he's, he kind of either unveiled it to you or you laid it in front of him to say, we're going to use this for the good of our people, taking this message of wellness checks, of prayer, of being confident in the Lord Jesus right. Christ. We're going to bring that to, to Jesus' flock. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, God gets the glory out of Amen. our story. Yes. But we have to be able to tell the story. Ah. And a lot of times we don't want to tell the story because of the shamefulness that it brings. Mm. God didn't make no junk. Everything he made, he said it was good. But you have to believe that. And you have to believe that in your, your heart, soul, and mind that God is bigger than any situation that you'll ever go through. And so I just stu I stood on that in firm belief that God is. And I kept pushing. And I'm continuing to push <laughs> as I continue to go through. You know, the, the, the thing is to go through. Yeah. We don't want to go through. We don't like the process. I'm not telling you I didn't like the process. I did not like the process because it put me to a place where I had to halt and stop. Yes. And I'm a very busy person. And I remember preaching or teaching a, a, a message on being too busy. <laughs> and I used that acronym buried under Satan's yoke. So if I can get you so busy, I can't hear from God. Amen. So he put me in a place where I had to be settled and resting and learning how to rest. So that's the key is in learning how to rest in this busy, chaotic world. You know, that, that is a perfect message from you. I mean, you have a master's in theology. Yes. So what I love about this is that we know instinctively, right? We know instinctively you can't, you can't get too busy. Otherwise, it's devil's play, playground. It keeps us away. But even with the training that you have, the world still gets busy, and we get busy, and we do a lot of things, but ultimately, it can block us, right, from yes. the Word of God, from the voice of God. Yes. Well, that is strong. See, one of the things about going to seminary, it, it gave me an opportunity to learn more. But I tell everybody, I'm going to save you a whole lot of money. It's still Jesus is still the answer. <laughs> and that's yes. just a path that God took me on. Yes. You know, because I'm a teacher. That's, that's my gift. So that's the path he took me on. But Jesus is still the answer. Amen. And you have to believe that. We have to stand on the word of God Amen. and believe that's what it says. Your, your message, especially right now, where many, many, many of us are, are scared, we're, we're worried, we're, we're down. Every time you turn on the TV, there's negative news. And that's not even dealing with a personal news right. highlight like you had, right? Major situation. And so it's, it gets really... Uh, it gets difficult to stay up. And tonight, you know, a main message for our show is, despite what's going on, there is only one king. There's only one main thing, Amen. the real thing, and that is Jesus Christ. You know what I'd love you to do, if you wouldn't mind? Yes. And I, I want to make sure, by the way, after we do this, I want to make sure we tell the audience how to get in touch with you. and your turn. I'd like you to look out to the camera here, and I'd like you to encourage someone who, who is dealing either with what you've dealt with or just dealing with, you know, 
situations where they're not feeling short-footed. Can you encourage them tonight? Would yes. you encourage them tonight? Yes, I want to just let you know that God is a healer. You have to stand on his word and believe that he is who he said he is. You have to understand that God didn't give us a spirit of fear and that we need to know that he is above everything. I keep hearing something say faith over fear, but you have to believe that God is who he say he is. And you have to stand on the word of God. If you don't know, go to the word of God. There is a solution to every problem in the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's strong. Yes. That's such a blessing. Thank you. Yes, that's awesome. So um, I want to be sure that, that our audience knows how they can connect with you, how they can get a copy of your book, how they can interact and so on. How, how, what's the best way to do that? Well, you can go to Amazon.com, Walmart.com. Most major carriers have the book. Okay. I don't look like what I've been through. You can actually go on my website. It's DeborahThomasConsulting.com to purchase it. Um, my information is on there. My telephone number is on there. Because um, I want to give women uh, hope to encourage them that they can get through this. You know, the mountain seems so high, but he said, if you speak to the mountain, then it can be moved. But you have to have the faith and the tenacity and the determination to do it. Mm -hmm. You just can't sit back and be idle and say, woe is me. Mm -hmm. God allow you to go through something is to help somebody else. And so he allowed me to go through this cancer, this breast cancer. I realized at an early in the stage of this that this is not about me. Okay, God, if you get me through this, then I, I promise you that I will help somebody else come along. We need to be able to be our brother's keeper, keeper and give them hope and encouragement mm. that God is. Absolutely. I, I receive what you're saying. I had years ago, I'm, I have a ministry that goes into prisons and homeless shelters, mm -hmm. brings the word of God through original contemporary Christian music, and we get a chance to preach mm -hmm. in between. And being a guitar player, you never want to mess with your left hand. Right. But I severed five tendons in these three fingers. Um, outlook to be able to play guitar again wasn't very good. But I received the miraculous healing, and I'm actually mm -hmm. able to do it again. But it's not, and I love what you said, it's not for me. It's not about, I was the dummy who got my hand cut. Mm -hmm. It was that the glory of Jesus Christ can reign through these, these miracles, these, these um, heal, this healing mm -hmm. that you've experienced, that I've experienced, and through that, encourage others to be able to stay focused on the real thing. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes. It is interesting, though, because I think for all of us, we, uh, we're human. So even though we, we try to stay vigilante about our faith and prayer and all, sometimes we just, get, we just get stepped aside. But, you know, I think one thing that the most important thing I hear coming tonight from you is, listen, get back to prayer. Get back to the good book. I'll add a couple, but I'm sure it's in, in light of what you're saying. You know, get to, get to your service on uh, Sunday, on Wednesday, whenever your, your service goes on. Get around like-minded people that will build you up and so that there's a, there's a positive, positive environment around you. And I want to tell you, it's so great to have you. Thank you, Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. I Bless you. It. Thank you. Wow. What a message. A great message. And with that, we get to hear from an awesome band again, Heather Patero and friends. They're singing Made. Take it away, y'all.
Heather Patero and the Tin Roof Band, you all sound amazing. I tell you, any band that has that level of instrumentation and vocals and a Hammond B3 player all together, are you kidding me? That's incredible. That's awesome. Thank you. Amen and amen. So now we get to jump in on another, with another um, amazing guest, uh, Dr. Juanita Woodson. Uh, she has so much going on. Um, and and I, I, I loved earlier we were talking and, you know, she really highlighted the fact that we really need to stay vigilant in, in our, with our prayers in faith and in being just totally committed, understanding that Jesus Christ has us even in the midst of the craziness that we're experiencing right now with this coronavirus. And with that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very you, excited. Oh, it's wonderful. You are like a, just such a, 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 a breath of fresh air and coming to just the, the most important aspect of where we need to be right this Amen. second. Amen? Amen. It's just so important. The Lord had revealed to me a couple of days ago. He said, you know, if my people, which are called by my name, would actually humble themselves and come together. He's saying unity is the most important thing today. The body of Christ needs to come together. They need to pray together and seek his face for him to turn these things around. Um, fear is not an option. And so there's so much fear that has been running rampant, even amongst believers. And the Lord is not pleased with that. He wants us to trust in him and lean on him, knowing that he will provide all of our needs. He will keep us. He will protect us, even in the time of crisis, famine, and destruction. And so he's saying that uh, he really wants the people of God to come together and pray about this epidemic and, and for him to overthrow it because we're in a spiritual war. Mm. I mean, Ephesians 6 talks about it. We are to suit up and prepare for war because we're fighting against principalities, not each other. You know, so I have um, been in the presence of some pastors and leaders and they have a different take on who should have services now, who should be canceling services and um, what the, who believes the most and who has the most faith and things like that. And the Lord said that we need to be praying. We need to be in unity and a house divided against itself can never stand. And so God wants his house to stand and the people of God to come together because ultimately he's going to win souls through this. Amen. Amen. I love, I love the way you bring in, you know, the dimension of putting on the whole armor of God. Yes. I mean, because, you know, you bring up a great point in this, in, in that, it, yes, we have to pray. We have to stay steadfast. We have to be confident. But, but also, we need to be tough. We, we, we cannot let the devil, because let's face it, when we have the situations where we get shaken, and we can get shaken in a number of ways, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, but when we get shaken, you know, the devil can sometimes use that as a playground, mm -hmm. can't he? Yes, he can, and that's why it's important for us to know the Word of God. Amen. We should always return to the Word of God, because when you feed yourself the Word, it wards off fear. Mm. If you continue to feed yourself the news or media or all of the disastrous things going on, it actually takes away your faith. It, it, it causes you to believe in the inevitable, and if you do that, it can come upon you. There's also scriptures that talk about how when you believe the worst, the thing that you feared the most has come upon you mm. and you don't want to do that. You want to focus your attention and your concentration on the word of God. What does he say? You know, how does he um, give you promises? What promises are they? What are the things that he had promised? And one of them is to take care of you, to keep you in the time of need, to never leave you nor forsake you, to always provide. David said he has never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. And we see the saints of God going to the grocery store, emptying out everything they have, including all of the toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> stop taking the toilet paper. <laughs> But what's most important is, are you praying? Are you fasting? At the end of that Ephesians 6, it talks about after you put on the whole armor of God, continue in prayer. Amen. You know, we're fighting a spiritual invisible enemy and we have to continue in prayer, stay suited up and know that God is going to win every war. God is going to get the victory out of this. Mm. Very strong message. Amen. I also think that, you know, when we, when we evaluate kind of where we are, right, in this faith walk, this is a terrible, 
situation for anyone to have to deal with it. It's as disruptive as it can be. But, you know, this, the idea that we have a God that is an almighty God, a God who sent his only begotten son down to suffer a vicious death, not just a minor thing, vicious death, only to be raised up three days later and to have a message for us. And by the way, sending the Holy Spirit to make sure that we have yeah. what we need here on earth from a faith perspective, right? And then, of course, from that comes the good book. And, but, I, but I think the key for us here, is, as, as we're describing it, is in addition to go reading, is go get yourself a couple morsels. I mean, if you haven't done this a lot, go grab a couple morsels that you can stand on because there's a lot of a lot of great info in the good book, but grab a couple that you can stand on. Like, for instance, whenever more than one is gathered in my name, I'm present. Yes. You ask and you receive. We can't wear out the Lord by asking, and yes. we can ask for blessings on us. We can ask for blessings on our family, on our neighbors. We can ask for a blessing that this whole pandemic evaporates, yes. that the people don't suffer as much, that, that we don't worry as much, that the people who we love that are experiencing difficulties with employment or whatever the case may be, that the Lord Jesus Christ can take care of yes. that. Amen? Amen. Absolutely. He can take care of that. And as a matter of fact, he says that he came that we might have life mm. and that life more abundantly. Mm. So God's desire is not to destroy all mankind. His desire is not to kill us mm. and to cause us to suffer at the time that we need him the most. But his desire is that we lean on him, mm. depend on him. We have a God that answers by fire. We have a God that will step in right on time and provide. Mm. He can be a spring of water in the midst of the desert. So no matter how dry and barren the land seems to be, he will always provide for those who love him mm. and that are called by his name, those who he have, um, have received his message, those that have received the salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, they have a promise. Mm. They have entitlement to the promises of God as long as they have received him. And I believe that there are people today that need to know this Savior because so many have lost their jobs. There are people who don't have a hope. Their job was their source. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their family structure being, you know, a way in which that there was no fear that could come and overthrow their family or overthrow their economic status or overthrow their businesses, their entrepreneurship. But now we're faced with a situation that you have to have something else that is your source. There's a supernatural source that we serve. And I believe that if they had the opportunity to be led to Christ, they would choose him. Amen. Amen. And, and those of us that have the Lord, that, you know, building that up and, and, and standing on it and bringing and invoking the Lord's blessing, yes. even in instances where we don't necessarily do that normally, you know? Yes. You're headed off maybe to work. Maybe you don't really think about, I'm, gonna, I'm going to pray before I do that, or I've got, a, I've got a big decision coming up. Maybe it's a work decision. It could be a family decision. It could be a, just a personal decision. Yes. But it's like, you know, now's a great time, and, and I hear you saying, to, yes. to reconsider or at least consider, maybe it's not reconsider, consider how can we bring the Lord into every aspect of our life, and then for things that normally we might just try to do on our own. Sometimes it's tough because the outcome isn't as good, right, as yes. we would. That to invoke the name of Jesus Christ and ask the Lord to bless that situation so that it can be as great as it ever could be and then stand on it and don't feel so pressured, right, to have to see it through all by yourself because it gets tire tiring, don't yes. you think? Yes, it does. And so right now, hope is what's most important. Mm. And we just want the people of God and we want the world to know that there is hope through Jesus Christ. He is the one that we need to run to right now. He is the one that everyone needs to know that loves you, mm. that cares for you, mm. that is uh, wanting the best for you and that has a plan to prosper you and not to destroy you. Jeremiah 29 and 11, God is not in the business of destroying his mm. people, but he's in the business of blessing them and getting them to an expected end. There will be an end of this. You know, this too shall pass. And Amen. when it is over, we want to be on the side that says, Lord, we thank you and we receive the reward for trusting you, for waiting, for, for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and not being fearful and running and hiding. 
you know, and so we just admonish everyone, believers and the world at large, to trust Jesus in this season. He's going to bring us out. Absolutely. Wonderful. You know what else I, I was thinking about as you were describing that is, is something that I, I take with me and, and share when we're out in the prisons and the shelters. And that is, you know, once, first of all, you got to take care of your own self from a personal yes. faith standpoint, or else you really can't honestly help anyone else yes. with, with their faith, right? I mean, you, you got you to build up yourself first, right? But then I thought about this, is that as you were speaking, is that we actually also have an opportunity, you know, for those around us that love us yes. and we love, yes. um, and maybe sometimes they don't love us and we love them anyhow, but the idea that, you know, for, for others to see how we are using our faith, and I don't mean to be showy, I, I, that's not what I'm talking about, yes. right? I'm talking about truly doing what you're describing, right? trusting in the Lord, being faithful with the Lord, being in prayer with the Lord. But my point is having that peace and then sharing that peace with those around us. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be, you know, what we're really talking about is how that could actually have someone look over and say, man, I, I've been just watched like six hours of news and I'm about to jump out of a window. But yet I sense this calm and, oh, I see how, how you're dealing with this. Let me go, let me go try that as well. Is that fair? Yes, absolutely. That's what we need to do. We need to exemplify the Christ we say that we serve. Mm. We need to show forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Those are indications um, that Christ lives in us. Love, kindness, gentleness, um, self-control. We're not losing it, going crazy, long suffering. We're willing to uh, stick with the Lord as he carries us through, no matter how long it's going to be. So I believe that in time, as those believers in Jesus Christ continue to stand firm on their faith, have love one to another, right. peaceful, um, not losing control, going crazy with the stores and shopping and all those things, but that they will exemplify this to the world and the world will see. Mm. They're going to know the true, the true ones that uh, follow after Christ, that follow his precepts, that believe in him for real. They're going to see that. And I believe it's going to do a great drawing. It's mm. going to be a massive drawing for the kingdom of God. That's good. That's really, that's really interesting. I, I, you know, I, I tell you, I, I think for most of us, when, when things get difficult, and if we've ever been exposed to anything around faith, sometimes that cry, that call from the Lord sometimes seems a bit louder and 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 you know what I mean because it's like I, I need a solution here and, and doing the regular day-to-day -day stuff that I know how to do isn't working so I mean for those of us tonight who are, we're worried and you know just turn off the TV and it sounds like oh my gosh the the world's ending and uh, and I need something more than that that it's like well look answer that calling go go spend a few minutes TV off not this program, but <laughs> TV off, uh, uh, don't stop worrying about the things that, you know, the sky's falling, the sky's falling, and use this as an opportunity to say, okay, this is just one thing, as you said, will pass, but now, let me center in Christ, let me center in the faith, let me center and build up and put on the whole armor of God, fortify myself so that I, my walk is different coming out of this. Yes, absolutely. Your walk is going to be different. It's going to look different. And you're going to have to use the principles of God. Mm. Uh, and you're going to have to war the way he tells you. Sometimes the one thing that the Lord deals with me as a deliverance minister is through strategy. So there will be some situations that the Lord will say, now I want you to pray this way. And there will be other situations he'll say, now pray that way. And so specifically for this one, he said that um, this is almost like a David and Goliath type situation. Mm. He says that even when you are engaging in warfare, um, the strategy is to cut the head off of the coronavirus. There's mm. a crown that sits on it. And he was saying that even with the crown, that's what corona means. Um, it is a crown. And he says, cast it down, cut the head off of this thing in the spirit ram and begin to pray in the spirit and war against it and overthrow the altars of this particular virus. So there's a lot that we can do 
um, once we understand the information that God wants us to have, and how do we get it in prayer? Yes. We need yes. to get in prayer, seek his face. He will give us the strategy. He will give us revelation knowledge. And then we begin to pray according to what God have revealed. Mm. So we're definitely in a time and a season of great revelation knowledge and great um, teaching anointing about how to be strategic with prayer, <clears throat> to be most effective and to get the result that God wants us to get. We don't want to beat in the air, as Paul said. We don't want to be missing our target. So prayer is essential to know what tools we need to fight how we're going to fight the enemy. What a blessing. Amen. Wow. So we have just a few seconds here. If I want to make sure that people know how to be able to get in touch with you if they wanted to. What's okay. the best way to do that? I am on Facebook. It is Dr. Juanita Woodson. If you go to Facebook, Facebook um, forward slash Dr. Juanita Woodson. I have a website, www.drjuanitawoodson.com. Follow me on YouTube. We've just started a refreshed YouTube page, and it's under Juanita Woodson. And uh, those are the ways. We have tons of books that are made available, a few books that are made available on Amazon. Um, for you to look up if you need anything to help you along your journey um, with Christ. So we're here for you. We're willing to pray with you. We pray every Wednesday on Facebook Live, and we just believe that God has greater for you. It's going to get better after this. All is not lost. This is your time and your season to come forth. Do not let the enemy fool you or trick you to think that it's over. He's a liar in Jesus' name. Be at peace. All is well. Amen. What a blessing. Thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. Wow. So with that, we get a chance to listen again to Heather Pet uh, Petro and uh, Patero and friends in the cross. Take it away, y'all. Gently. 
amen and amen and amen, we now get a chance to sit down with Heather Patero. Uh, she has her band here. Uh, they refer to themselves as friends. I'm sure they are. They sound wonderful. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it was our pleasure to be here. I mean, you all sound fabulous. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Now, your band, I mean, you've, you've been playing for many years. Yes, sir. Um, but, but where, can you describe a little, where do you usually find yourself playing? And I know you, you do a lot of faith-filled music, but it'd be great to know a little more about the band and the genre and, sure. you know, all that. Sure. Well, I'm first a voice and piano instructor. I've oh. been teaching almost 22 years wow. this year. It's hard to believe. <laughs> and um, with the, the virus and everything going around, we've had to um, go to digital and virtual. So a, a lot of my students are, are doing the virtual thing right now oh, as wow. well. So, um, but uh, Heather and the Tin Roof Band is some of the um, components of this, of this band also sing with me when we do that. But we do corporate events. We do parties, private events, weddings. Um, oh wow! A lot of church events, you know, just different things. And then, these are all my friends. And I was so glad when um, I was asked to come tonight. And I just call my friends and say, "Hey, y'all want to come with me?" And Isn't we all funny? love to make music. And more importantly, we all love Jesus, and we all love being together. Mm. And I think that's that's the greatest thing. I think is to be able to make music with your friends. You know, so it, it's oh, yeah. it's really awesome. Well, I can I tell you, you know, listen, being a musician and listening to all the subtleties, all the way across. The group. I mean, you know, the vibe with the drums and the bass really, in, you know, nicely complementing one another. The guitar player, like especially that last song, but but all of the songs sure. just being so tasteful. The Hammond B3 firing it up over there. You on the keys, and then the voices. I mean, it just it just so beautiful. It just really the whole the whole band just comes alive and it sounds so nice out oh, here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think our thing tonight was we just really wanted to bring hope tonight and mm. wanted to really be a blessing to the viewer tonight. And and these all these all these songs have meanings, um, have meaning. A lot of these songs are on my album and they all came from a place in my own life where I wrote them out of, like in the cross, the one we just did, um, came out my parents um, in twenty eleven was kind of a tough year for us. And mm. my dad died here uh, in February of that year and he had had cancer three different times and wow. three different places and Sorry then six weeks that. later my mom's twin sister's husband passed away mm. and then in October of that same year my mother passed away unexpectedly oh so 2011 was a tough year and I think for musicians and artists and songwriters when we play it's not just to play just for the sake of playing, many times it's because there's something on our heart and because there's something that we want to share with the world and, and express. Music should be about expression. And so all these songs that we're doing tonight are expression of something. And I hope that um, the viewers and everyone listening will get something out of it that they can hold on to through these the, these times and through this crisis. Absolutely. And and that's what we need, right? We need encouragement. We need sure. to focus back on the real thing, the main thing, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And yeah, I can see that. I mean, the, the messaging in your, in your songs is uplifting and strong. Now, um, we could have people tonight saying, geez, I'd like to either get more information, have you come out to something that will be in the future, uh, you know, get a, gets hold of your music. Um, do you have a way for them to get in touch with you? Sure. Um, my website is uh, www.heatherpatero, and it's Peter with an O, P E T E R O dot com. And then I'm on Facebook, uh, YouTube, pretty much uh, Instagram, Twitter. I mean, we. I, we cover we cover it all. We're covered, so. yeah. So it's as long as they get, as long as they have your name. Right. They type it into Google, it should come up. That's an easy way to remember it, huh? Peter with an O. Peter with an O. Hey. That's how I know telemarketers call me because they mispronounce. <laughs> <laughs> they butcher it, huh? That's right. <laughs> well, it's so uh, it is so encouraging. I mean, you you guys have such amazing talent, but you you have such a humble heart that oh, thank you. it doesn't matter how good people are. This is about this isn't about skill sets and showing off. This is about doing the Lord's work, the Lord's will, spreading uh, a spirit of faith and, 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 and uplifting the body of Christ sure. so that we all stand taller in our faith. 
sure. and we're able to weather storms. Of course, we have a storm now, but we're going to get through this with oh, the Almighty absolutely. God. And music is healing. Music is, is a soother of the soul. And mm. whether you're listening to a hymn or you're listening to uh, a secular song or, you know, I think that's the joy of learning an instrument is, yes. you know, so shout out to all the music educators, you know. <laughs> it's like that's something that nobody can ever take away from you is have, knowing that instrument. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time an adult said to me, oh, I wish I'd never quit taking piano. That is true. I've heard. <laughs> That as well. I'd be a very rich woman, you know. <laughs> but I think that's the thing is that so the music is so important. Art is so important to our world, you know. Absolutely. I want to tell you, it's so great having you all here. Thank you so much oh, for being here. Oh, it's our pleasure. Amen and amen. And don't go anywhere. We have an incredible second half coming up. It's going to be equal to what you've just experienced in the first half. And with that, stay with us. Amen and amen and amen. Welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Evangelist Jordan Coletta with JBB Ministries and the Jordan B Band. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us. I tell you, we've, we've had a really strong uh, first half and we have equally uh, a strong second half. But you know, one of the things that we, uh, we want to do tonight is lift up all of us, right? We've, we've had many, many days and many hours of news that just seems to weigh us down. But you know what, at the end of the day, that's not what the news is. The news is that we serve a mighty God. We have a loving God who loves us, who wants nothing more than for us to be well, do well. And so tonight, we have an uplifting message. We have some great guests. We have some great music. So uh, we really believe you're going to enjoy the second half of the program. And with that, we get to hear from some more angels, Heather Patero and her friends. And they're going to be singing my everything. Take it away, y'all.
straight before me. Amen and amen and amen. Hey, y'all, that was absolutely outstanding. It doesn't get better than that, huh? Wow. So, uh, you know, we've been talking about prayer and faith and how no matter what the situation is, that, that our faith and our strength and our comfort and our blessings come from one source, and that's the Almighty God, Jesus Christ. And so tonight we have another guest, a great guest, who um, he has a... Uh, just a, a wonderful message for us tonight about a form of prayer. And he has a new book, uh, Speaking in Tongues, Enjoying Intimacy with God Through Tongues and Interpretations. I, what, a, what a wonderful topic. And with that, we get to talk with Chris McKinney. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure. I'm enjoying myself. Man, I'll tell you what. You know, I... Uh, I love that we're going to get a chance to talk about the gifts of the Spirit and specifically speaking in tongues. Because to be honest with you, I think a lot, a lot of people, you know, we, 
we hear of the gifts. I mean, this is a gift. It isn't mm -hmm. something that's just conjured up. It's a gift uh, from the Lord. But I think, you know, we hear about it. We, uh, we, we may have been exposed to it. But at the end of the day, many, 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 many of us don't necessarily truly get it, understand what's going on there. And more importantly, even understanding what might be going on there, mm -hmm. probably many of us have never experienced that or may never without hearing more about it, understanding how you can invoke the gift. First of all, what they're about, mm -hmm. where do they come from, mm -hmm. uh, why are they important in our faith walk, and then, by the way, how, how might I enjoy that? So with that, let's jump right in. Okay, right? yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So, you know, you mentioned just there's a lot of misunderstanding, and, and I think, um, you know, it's, it's a gift that, it's so easy um, for people to get distracted by, you know, just it's 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 different, right? I mean, it's you know, speaking and praying in a language that you don't even know. I mean, that's just so kind of out there, right? But you know, God is not uh, the one who sort of has the gift or makes it, um, you know, like a, a a thing that we're supposed to kind of you know, be hush-hush about. And, you know, the first appearance of this gift at Pentecost uh, is very public. You know, the Holy Spirit comes, and that's the first thing that happens is they're out in the public square, and they're all speaking very loudly in these languages, you know, that they don't know. And, and the people in the crowd are hearing in their own language, and it's a miracle, and people are saved. And so, you know, that, like you said, it's a gift. And that's, that's the biggest, I think, the, the biggest burden I have to carry this message is that I want people to understand, and we, I have two co-authors for this book, we, we want people to understand that, um, you know, this is a gift, it's a blessing, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not something that, um, you know, sh should be, uh, you know, you should feel awkward about, or, or, or you know what I'm sa saying? Yeah, it's yeah just, I do, yeah, absolutely. It's something that can help you and can help others, and, and you know, um, so anyway. No, that's yeah, great. Yeah. So, so one thing I think we all would like to hear, and mm -hmm. it would be helpful if you wouldn't mind sharing this, is what was it like, like what when you first experienced praying in tongues, the gift of spirit? Where, how did you receive it? What were you doing? Um, did you know a lot about it at the time? Maybe that'd be a good way to also. Yeah. So I grew up going to churches that um, just, you know, I'd never heard anything about it really, um, and. Uh, so I, around four years ago, um, I was in a small group with the church that I'm with now, and we, we were just doing this uh, um, book by Jimmy Evans, and there was a, a chapter on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we got to that chapter, and I thought, well, wow, this is something that's right there in Scripture, and I don't have it, you know? And mm -hmm. so I started praying uh, for the Holy Spirit to fill me and, and to give me spiritual gifts, and I think for a couple of weeks there, I think I was trying at home, you know, just to to see if I could pray in tongues. You know, I'm just trying, and and but I felt like it was just something I was trying. It wasn't sure. really coming, you know. It wasn't wasn't uh, the the Lord uh, giving the, me the gift yet. And so anyway, a couple of weeks into it, you know, I went back uh, I, we, in this prison ministry small group that we were doing. I went back in there. Uh, I got the the guys, the inmates there in the prison to pray over me to and lay hands on me to to receive uh, spiritual gifts and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when I went home that night, it was just different. I just prayed and, you know, just the whole way home. And it was mm. just flowing out of me and uh, something where I knew that the Lord had given me a gift, you know. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah. So I, I think what, one of the key things that you've said is, is, is don't be afraid if you feel like this is something that you want to receive. First of all, don't be afraid to ask. That's right. number one, right? Ask and you shall receive right and then with that you know you I, I i hear what you're saying that you know that you're not sure exactly it's like riding a bike you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. but conceptually you've seen it but you don't really know what you're doing on top of this bike but you have to take that first pedal you have to push off right and and i and i i think that's important what you said is you actually had kind of a false start initially but that didn't deter you it just wasn't it wasn't time that that the lord was preparing you but yet, that just wasn't that exact moment. But what? Not shortly thereafter, but, but, but with some more, a lot more prayer. Right. All of a sudden, the Lord 
filled you with the Holy Spirit and gave you the gift. It's not something you have to learn how to do. It gets given, and it, once you've got it, you've got it. It's not like you have to try to figure it out. It's gonna, it is a gift. It's like waking up, and all of a sudden you've got skills that you didn't have yesterday. Is that right. fair? Yeah, I think I do think it develops in some people over time, you know, so you may start out with just a few words or oh, syllables sure. that, that sure. come to you. And uh, so that was actually one, one of the things that we addressed in the book, because some people uh, wonder about that and they start to wonder because they hear someone else doing it. and It sounds a little different. It sounds a little more advanced, you know, oh, or something. That's and, interesting. Yeah. And so they uh, they start to wonder, especially if it goes on for a long time, is, is there is there something wrong with me? Am I is this real? Am I you know, it just you know, you can start to have doubts. And uh, so it, to to anyone who's you know experiencing that kind of um, uh, situation and maybe you're having some doubts, you know, my answer is just as a, as a father, you know, when my children were, were first learning to speak, you know, they only had a few words and, you know, uh, I never got tired of hearing them say those few words. It was, it was always precious to me to hear, hear them say mommy or daddy or, uh, you know, whatever uh, words they were learning and, and, you know, and they're just trying to learn and develop and grow in, in the use of language. It's the same way. This is a, a, a spiritual gift, uh, it, you know, and, and uh, the Lord loves it. He, he, it's precious to him to, to hear you speak and pray to him in, in that language. And so um, keep, keep doing it, you know, keep going with it. Don't be discouraged. Yeah. And then for those who never experienced it, I hear you describing that, hey, you know, give it a shot. Pray for it. Pray mm -hmm. that the Lord will gift you yes. that. And then I guess it, it sounds like it's also not a bad idea to surround yourself with like-minded people, people who do have the gifts. I mean, I guess that's not a bad thing either. Is that right? Right. You it's, know, not, it's not mandatory, but not a bad idea. Right. Right. I mean, we see that in Scripture. We see examples of that in Scripture where, you know, uh, uh, before sending someone out, you know, to, to go do ministry or something like that, they lay hands on them, they pray yes, over them, yes. you know, so I think, I think that is definitely a method that the Lord uses to uh, impart spiritual gifts and, and anointing, uh, you know, to people. And so um, that's definitely one, one thing that people can do. And, and uh, you know, but the biggest thing is to ask and receive. And I, I felt like I kept hearing that before, uh, before I came here tonight, just you know, I'm praying about this. I'm praying about the, the, the interview and everything. And I just kept feeling, feeling like the Lord was saying, you know, that anybody out there, he's, he's ready to give these gifts, re receive. And he just, I felt like he kept saying to me, receive, receive, you know, tell them to receive, you know, because uh, I feel like he's also telling me that these gifts are necessary, you know, right now for the body of Christ. Um, for, for me personally, you know, he has revealed things to me through me praying in tongues and then interpreting my tongue. Uh, he's revealed things to me that have helped other people tremendously. Um, he gave me a lot of encouragement through that, especially in the first, you know, few months. Um, there was just a lot of personal encouragement that I received through that, you know, and, and we've been talking about fear tonight and things like that. And, and you know, I actually um, uh, didn't really plan to talk about this, but I, I actually uh, was diagnosed with cancer while I was working on this book. I had... Uh, prayed for and, and, and received the gift of interpretation. Mm -hmm. And about three months into that, you know, just out of nowhere, I'm hit with a cancer diagnosis. And, you know, um, one of the things that the Lord uh, did for, for me through that was basically, I felt like he told me he was going to remove worry, doubt, and fear from my life because I was a person who used to worry all the time about mm. just all kinds of things, mm. you know, just I used to worry a lot about safety and just things, just much more than the average person, you know, and I think the Lord was just, you know, looking at me, not that the Lord gave me that, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, no, I'm no, saying no. That, you know, he brings good from a bad situation. So, that. yeah, so when, when, he, when he saw the situation I was in, he said, I'm going to use this for good. I, that's the way I took it, and he, and he did that. And I got to tell you, you know, uh, all this stuff that you guys are talking about with, with the, I don't even really watch the news that much. I know if I get on Facebook, every other post is about the coronavirus, but I just don't pay that much attention. In the middle of all of this, I'm kind of, you know, having the time of my life right now, operating in these spiritual gifts. The Lord is moving through them. He's blessing people. I'm seeing him bless other people through these, you know, and he's, I mean, you know, he's got me here on TV. I mean, come on, I'm, I'm having a great time, you know, and I know all that stuff's going on and I know people are worried, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you just start depending on the Lord and moving with the Lord, doing what he wants you to do, 
Um, you know, finding out where you're gifted, finding out where you're called, and, and just finding out where you fit into the body of Christ and, and uh, letting him have his way with you. You're going you're gonna to have fun with it. You know, I just never realized how much fun ministry is and, um, you know, the, the peace and the joy that comes with that, you know. That's great. That's great. You know, it, it's, it's wonderful to hear that message because I think a lot of us, especially now, um, hear nothing but doom and gloom because uncertainty is terrible, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when it's something you, there's not even a cure. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, okay, you got this problem, but there's no way to fix you right now. Mm -hmm. You just have to tough it out until, you know, some other medicines work and blah, blah, blah. My, my point is w what you depict is really what the Lord wants was is like, you know, these things are going to come and go, you know, whether it's this virus thing, whether it's this other thing over here, that you don't want to live your life being bogged down in these things because you miss the real thing. You miss what the Lord has in mind. And I think what you're saying tonight is just the way it has worked out is that even in the most toughest of situations, the Lord has given you just amazing optimism, yeah. right? Yeah. Through his gifts, through the things you've seen with people who you've been praying with. Uh, you also have interpreted tongues, which is a whole nother gift. Right. Um, but I think it's a great message for us because again, we want to talk tonight about the victory of Jesus, that the blessings of Jesus are here right this second. We don't have to wait. We don't have to, right. there's nothing to wait for. Right. We're waiting for this right this second. Jesus Christ, I love you. Bless us, bless us, bless our families, bless those in need, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for anything. Mm -hmm. It's here and now. And you're saying, yes, and I'm living proof. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what God showed me through, through that whole time in my life is that no matter what the enemy threw at me, God had the answer for it. I didn't have to worry. I never had to worry, you know, never yeah. had to, to, to fear and, and, and doubt his goodness and his concern for me. You know, he always, he's always got the answer. He's always got his hand. He's got it figured out way before it ever starts, you know. He's always, you know, five steps ahead of the enemy, you know. I mean, it's just, and so, I mean, he's got the answer for, for whatever you're dealing with. Now, one way you might tap into that answer is through uh, spiritual gifts. I mean, he reveals things to us through spiritual gifts. Mm. Um, they are supernatural. That's how the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to, to people and reveals things to people and, and uh, uh, ministers to people, you know. And so, I, you know. I went for years not knowing that, and so now I'm, I'm glad I get to carry this message. It's, uh, it's a joy, and I, you know, I hope people uh, are willing to receive it. I mean, just that you know, God wants to give you gifts, and you know, just ask. Even with the gift of interpretation, this is the big instruction in the Bible. The one who uh, speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. Mm. The Lord just tells you to ask for it. Just, just pray for it, you know, and, and, and receive, and, and uh, it, it'll be a huge blessing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a great message tonight. It's, it's, I think it's like an, another step, right, in our faith walk. How do we get closer to Christ? How do we get more plugged into Christ? Um, so the idea of praying uh, for the spiritual gifts, uh, starting, by the way, praying that the, Jesus Christ just fills us with the Holy Spirit first and foremost, right? And then praying that the Lord will use the gifts of the Spirit to help us better communicate with him and, mm -hmm. and, and then pray, Lord, please give me the gifts of speaking in tongues. And then just be faithful that the Lord, it, he'll bestow it to you. Just stay vigilante. Do not worry if you don't get it initially that he will give it to you if you keep praying. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to make sure that we uh, cover if, if someone wants to get um, in touch with you, mm -hmm touch with things that are going on in, in your ministry and get a hold of your book. How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so uh, our publishing company name is Called Writers Christian Publishing. And so the website is calledwriters.com. And uh, it's not called writers.com. It's, it's two words, you know, two words put together as one, calledwriters.com. How do you spell and, it? Just uh, sort of. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's Called Writers Christian Publishing. I just wanted to make sure that that, that name gets a, a, a little... Uh, funky sometimes for gotcha. people to understand. But the book is on Amazon and then on Facebook, uh, people can find us on there. It's just facebook.com slash called writers. And we have a group on there for people who want to learn more about tongues and interpretation. And so, you know, that, that's going well. And people are, people are receiving, we're seeing people receive these gifts and, and, and learning and growing in them. So, but everybody's invited. It's very refreshing, very yeah. refreshing. Now, um, one last thing before we 
we go. Um, when you think about the gifts, when you think about what's here, and you cite it, you're very specific. It, this isn't this isn't some thing that's not of the Lord. That that the gifts of the Spirit of the Lord. Pray for them, and then if you if you're finding uh, that you've received them, just let them flow. Don't be afraid of them. Pray more and more and more, and the Lord will continue to develop that gift in you, and, and that's kind of how you went, right? And then through that, you'll find yourself even more plugged into the Lord. Is that is that kind of your walk? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely something that has increased my intimacy with the Lord. But and, and the biggest thing is just to know that it's a blessing. It is not a burden. You know, I think I used to see just serving the Lord in general and, and also gifts as like, uh, you know, all these just a burden. But it's not. It's a huge blessing. It's easy. Well, you've been a blessing tonight. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here and sharing this special prayer. Thank you. Amen. I appreciate it. Wow. So uh, we're going to about to wrap up this portion of the show. We're going to uh, finish up tonight with another song from uh, the band that we've been so blessed with. But tonight, uh, you know, you've heard, I think, just some great, great messaging from our guests that the Lord Jesus Christ has us in the palm, palms of his hand. That we're not fighting these things and worrying about these things alone. And worry does little for us that it's really about Jesus Christ, our faith, our intimacy, our connection with the Lord. He won't give us more than we can handle, and he'll give us what we need when we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen and amen. And with that, we get a chance to listen again to Heather Patero and friends. How sweet it is. Take it away, y'all.